it's, it's interesting. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine this morning over lunch, over breakfast. Uh, yeah, so I got diagnosed in um, 2016, all right? But 2015 is when we started noticing our PSA levels start to increase. I'm one of these guys, believe it or not, that if if the doctor says when you turn 50, you need to start doing colonoscopies, I did it, right? And when I turned 60, you know, uh, you need to start doing a PSA test, I did it. And so, you know, it's trying to be preventative, and so, uh, unfortunately, when I started doing my colonoscopies, they found I had friggin' colon cancer, right? But thankfully, snip, 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 you know, and there may have been two or three runs where we we had it, and they found it, they took it away. Uh, I also had uh, skin cancer, but that is, again, the more of just scraping and so on. So in 2016, after the biopsy, um, and they found that I had, uh, I had, I had, uh, cancer prostate cancer it 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 was um it was high risk i had a gleason score of eight and anyone who knows a space you know it's either it starts with uh start with zero right to 10 and that they do is they take a number of different uh biopsies from different parts of the prostate and and uh they take them and they measure whatever they see in terms of the degree of number of PC cells, prostate cancer cells, and rate it, right? And so in my case, um, they were both four, no matter where they were, right? Which means I had a lot of them, and it wasn't just in one location versus another. It was kind of evenly spread, and they said, yeah, this is high risk. You need to, we need to do something. I wasn't really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? shock I, I you know I, my world didn't come to an end right i figured all right well it's cancer i've dealt with it before right uh we surgically removed it and we were done so i figured okay we're gonna remove the prostate so in the summer of 2016 we removed the prostate and uh i decided then that uh I mean, I always lived large, right? I, 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 if you've, you've been hearing my stories of travel, I didn't do things half. And this notion of travel, I wanted to become a ski bum, right? I had never done that. When I you know, graduated from high college, I went, you know, I graduated 21st of May, June 8th, I was working at CNL, right? And that intervening period, it was find a, you know, find a find an apartment, get your suits, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there's no, no downtime. So I said, I want to become a ski bum. So I said, what better time than now? So during the summer, while I was recuperating from the uh, the surgery, which is dramatic because they, it's not, you know, they cut a big friggin' line uh, to get at the, uh, it wasn't one of these microscopic things, which is now more common. So I have a big, big scar. Um, and so it took me some time during the summertime to recuperate. And while I was doing that, I decided to build a truck camper, a uh, camper for my truck. And I said, and that's going to be my adventure home. And, and it was. So I uh, I traveled uh, out west to go skiing, got one of those uh, max passes or icon passes. Um, and so I, I turned to traveling remote, you know, I, 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 I turn to travel, to adventure travel, and tried, try to be um, chasing the snow wherever it went. And I thought that would get my mind off of the cancer. And it did. And so for three years, that's what I did. And I wouldn't, you know, I certainly I had some fatigue. Certainly there was some downtime, but I was still doing and I was living life. Then I come home and I had to come home because I had some heart issues. I had to have a, another stent put in. And when I did come home, I went to my PCP and we went through another battery of tests, did a PET scan. And they, and they said, well, cancer's come back. And um, it's outside, it's outside your body. It's not metastasized yet, so let's uh, let's radiate it, right? And let's do some hormonal treatment. And so we did. Again, I thought we had a plan. We went off and executed that plan. And I uh, and it was during the pandemic and stuff like that, so it's kind of a weird time. Uh, but I still didn't 
I, I still functioned, right? I was still volunteering with Habitat. I was, I was still, you know, I didn't have the same le en uh, energy levels I us usually did, um, you know. But I was, I was, I was living, and I was living with the mindset of taking advantage, being mindful, being present, and all that stuff. In 2023. When I came back from that seven month, uh, seven month uh, journey, um, I had another PET scan, and that's when I found that it was metastasized. And then when it, that happened, it felt like someone smacked me in my stomach. I lost all my air. I almost fainted. I mean, it was it was like, okay, this is real now. Right, because while we were at stage two and three, we were battling it. Right, I was. There was. It, it could be, it could be fought and could be won. But when you reach a stage four, where where it's now a tumor that's metastasized, in my case, my lymph nodes, um, you're not in a game of managing. Not in a game where you can win. And that really, it really impacted me. You know, I, I pride myself in being able to formulate game plans for success, right? And as, as part of that road to success, failure is inevitable, right? And the more failures, the more learning opportunities. And I turn those things into being able to be successful. Now, failure is dying, right? I mean, and there's not much to read. You can't, you can't, we can't rebound from that, right? And so this notion now of, of, uh, of living what I'm living in terms of managing it has taken a whole different, whole different, uh, whole different perspective for me. And that really heightened. I thought I was heightened during the period of time of 216 to 220, but from 223 to now, it's, you know, I've got a real sensitivity in terms of the importance of every moment and in, in, in most importantly, the importance of family and support structures, right? I, I'm, I'm doing, a, I'm not, a, I'm, you know, I'm not a guy that's reaching out to people all the time saying, how you doing? Let's talk, let's go for lunch. You know, it's, it could be years before we have that conversation, right? Now I'm kind of like, no, I need to be doing that a little more often because my my for some some reason it refills me in terms of my spirit. Right. After hanging out with some folks that I've, you know, I we used to work together, which is great. And I feel energized after that. Um allowing me to kind of continue to take that step forward. And so this last year has been really difficult because now that I'm on uh, I'm on the treatment. Uh, uh, I was on this very aggressive treatment for one month where it literally brought my testosterone from a normal amount to zero within like two weeks, right? And, you, you know, you go from operating at this level and then all of a sudden zero energy. It's like, holy Jesus. I didn't, you know, naps. I, I no, not for me. Now it's like, is there a, is there a flat surface I can lay down for about 10 minutes? I don't care where the heck I am. <laughs> you know. And so now it's a, now it's a matter of choosing what I do when I do. Um it, it's it's modified my lifestyle. I, I have to admit that. It's not gonna stop me. I'm still gonna be traveling. In fact, I'm heading up to the 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 Atlantic Maritime um in September. I'm gonna spend a couple of months up there. You know, doing Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Prince Edward Isle, Labrador, Newfoundland, um, and my little camper again. 